Hi, again. So, July, uh, August 1st, 2024. Time is... Time is... Uh, well, I saved a Word file just now, and I think it was... 10.45 was that time, and this is maybe uh, half an hour later, so it's about 11.30. Hi! Um... So the idea was in the last video that we were talking about uh, the four personalities that we have inside us. Now I am, I am unfortunately, and I do. I apologize for many things. For example, the sticker. Okay, just forgive the sticker, please. It has a reason. There is a good reason why the sticker is here. It is so that I can differentiate between two glasses that look otherwise exactly identical. And when I look out, I don't see the sticker. So. There is actually no other thing I need to do to differentiate between the glasses except leave the sticker on one of them. Because I can't see the number on the sticker when I'm not wearing any glasses. Uh, and that way I can tell them apart. Um, there is always a simplest way to do something in your environment, no matter what it is. And then there are also people in your environment that have their own ideas of how to do something simpler because it affects that other thing over there and that other thing over there and that other thing absolutely over there cannot budge and so this one has to be not so simple because that not budging thing over there so after that one uh wow so i went really loud is a good word uh i basically just told everybody to be quiet just stop arguing for just one second and tell me again what the problem is. Why are we not at peace? Uh, psychiatrists call it hearing voices. I wouldn't exactly say it's hearing voices. I mean, you guys are people too, right? If you, you have voices, I have a voice. I, uh, if I'm listening to you, do you do we have to consider you as a victim of my imagination just because the psychiatrist wants to prescribe me with medication? So I have that whole issue going on right now. Um, and get ideas get thoughts they don't always express themselves as words sometimes it's just a push to go pick something up like a piece of rubbish from the ground uh, it's, an, it's a creative expression in your voice it's a bad habit even that can be divinely inspired as long as it's not hurting anybody so just because you're smoking doesn't mean you have to have cancer and just because you're smoking in a world where people believe that it means that you have to have cancer, it doesn't mean that you have to look at those stupid pictures that are on the boxes of those cigarettes that you know that are not killing you. I just... Because you have eternal life already. Your, your mind is in control of your body, including its health. Um, and it's on levels of your mind that you're not aware. So... Uh, so I'm not addicted, though. And that being said, we can continue this video for now. Um... We well, yeah. So six to one, half a dozen to the other. Someone said, "That was a daydream about what my mother would be expecting when she goes back into the house, whether or not she'd be expecting me to be smelling before I go have a shower or not." Blah blah blah. Um. But the point is, in the last video, I had mentioned that each of us uh, is the logical operator of our physical unit, and. That being said, the idea of logic itself is uh, duality. It's so that there are two endpoints on an extreme, and these two endpoints are somehow tied to the same eternal something, which is empty space. That's what we consider here. So I'm looking at myself on the video. I should really be looking at the video camera. If there was a way that computers could... Nah, that wouldn't make it look genuine. Okay, so I should look there. Anyway. Um, these endpoints have to be the same physical space. So as you're considering how it is that uh, an infinite circle of time, for example, uh, meets itself so that it's ongoing, perpetual, forever, eternal. Uh, if for a long time there, I didn't understand that. And then I realized that my, my perception of eternity itself was incorrect. Go figure. Um, so when a logical extreme looks for itself, 
And those are all the words I need to say. When a logical extreme looks for itself, it will always see itself. But because it has a concept of two being duality, that logic somehow uh, I am my, not my body, and I'm also not the ground that I stand on. So I am not my environment. And that applies to all my environments so that whew, I think I'm me inside an environment that I am not. And I can add the from to both of those. I think I am me from my environment. I am, I think I am me in my environment from which I think I come. Um, but I don't recognize my environment as me. And I don't recognize my body as part of my environment while I recognize it as me. By that same logical thinking. So it means that my body and the environment are in the same logical extreme, so to speak. So what's the other one? Well, I mean, if the one can't imagine itself, or to imagine itself perfectly, it would be a perfect reflection of itself, then it would just be, you know, a self-concept. And uh, but it's the perfect self-concept because it's it's logical and it's eternal and so that's uh, the highest concept of self and we all have one of those and we all tend to offend each other with one of those uh, when we go about making small changes to each other's environments that the other has already put into place to really make the environment function as neatly and practically as possible as that individual has figured out. So usually to to an existing state of order, a refined state of order must always appear as disorder, chaos, confusion. Um, and then there's the whole, why did you do that? I've been doing it for this long. I am the smartest person that I know. Otherwise, I would have done it a different way. So, you justify yourself to me right now. Um, so, make sure when you, when you phrase things, put it in the other person's language, okay? I am trying to help you save even more time by, or better yet, don't try to control the other person. That's the key one right there. Don't even suggest trying to control the other person. Don't, don't even do that. Because there's still a chance that they will get upset. So the only way that you can avoid upset all the other is by asking just a series of questions. So I guess I need to ask your Canada some questions. But you know, lawyers, uh, lawyers actually don't like questions. Lawyers understand that you're trying to follow the same law and that you're trying to bend that same law at the same time to make it better. Uh, and if you're going the other way, that's actually where lawyers, uh, they keep each other in check. So it's actually, traditionally, it's been the lawyers that have always refined the law. And it's always started out with, uh, well, probably one lawyer coming up from the ranks of nothing and no one because because he wouldn't have been able to show alliance to any of the current lawyers, even though many would have already suspected and understood what he was doing. Oh, it's chipmunks. Uh, it's squirrels, sorry. Um, I do know, though, the Freudian slips, they're the unconscious when they work through. And this is the really odd thing. They... Uh, they add negations sometimes where there's no negations intended and take out the negations where there are negations in it intended. So sometimes in legal documents, when you're reading them, like you really gotta like, not only do you have to read it carefully, you have to give the person the benefit of the doubt when you read it. And if you think that this is just entirely threatening, just only threatening and insulting and uh, egotistical and everything like that, you still have to give the person the benefit of the doubt and you have to allow them at least the chance to say, no, I never intended anything like that. 
Uh, and that's usually the end point in court of law from the judge. Now, if the lawyer can understand that it's actually the lawyer's first duty when the lawyer first reads that first document from that potentially opposing legal party, to think about it that way, then the lawyer becomes the judge and the teacher of the other lawyer or himself as the process of correction works itself out between the two lawyers as to why it is that they're even using any amount of time whatsoever talking about this subject if this subject does not have the full potential to harmonize the whole of the law. Uh, and as long as it has that potential, then they're always on the right track. They're never going to really make a mistake. The consistency is always progressing. And the little footnotes in laws like the Constitution of Canada that say that it was founded on this thing called God. Uh, and then in section 52 it says the supreme law has to remain consistent. It doesn't specifically say that consistency has to apply to itself first, but it ends up generally meaning that you're going to ping pong off your environment and have a lot of weird synchronicities happen more often than you can possibly keep track of in the day. Um, unless you're making videos all day or you're like a real live TV TV host, no, not host, uh, subject candidate for a reality TV show there is what I was trying to say. So we got a, a few entities inside us, most notably uh, one that perceives itself as four and in so doing, oh, one that perceives itself as two and then one that perceives itself as four. And then in so doing, um, confuses the levels that it's seeing itself on on top of cutting itself off from the very ground that it's connected to because this here and this is the beast that is your living environment that's like when you go to to pray to your good friend uh whatever language you want to use uh you have to include the ground you're walking on like common ground there that's the common friend uh and that's true in every environment so um, if you have nightmares of a man dressed in asphalt now, we can call him asphalt man. That would be your own unconscious highest representation of your own eternal self. After watching this video, because that is now the idea that has been given you and whatever other things that you could possibly associate to a man that is just like asphalt that appears in your dreams and does something that you don't understand what he's doing well you're gonna end up having to forgive him yep because uh everything that happens in the dream at night while you're sleeping and i might add the daytime because the unconscious doesn't stop while you wake up when you wake up so you're actually uh dual conscious unconscious person all the time yeah, that's a kicker hey because then you get like the one that splits off into two and four but it's really a two that splits off into two and four each part of but it's a bit holographic it's a bit holographic you end up logically matching things up faster and your, your concentration your awareness your attention somehow i think uh It might need to work slower or quicker relative to someone else's in order to balance the mental scales that both have brought with them unconsciously. You don't be alarmed by that. Sometimes you feel like the stupidest. Sometimes this will just happen again and again and again. Sometimes you'll scream out loud and say, Do I have to go through this shit again? And other times it'll be just like, Wow. So, um, those are what I call blurps. And I wrote this to my friend. I wish I could bring the screenshot up. But anyway, they're blurps. Alex, in the living living and, and sharing A Course in Miracles. Yeah. And, uh, because if you're eternally tuned, not eternally, if you're willingly tuned to eternal forgiveness, Everything else is just a blip, and uh, everything under the sun is up for grabs for you to correct and use and make better, improve upon, share with others, help others to learn how to use better, 
I mean, there's a million good things you can do with just about anything. And you only need your reason to talk to somebody to be able to use whatever it is they're using. So it doesn't... I'm, I'm not really sure where the whole idea of money figures in there, but I know that it's important to a lot of people still. And, um, and I know that it buys me food. And I do like the taste of certain foods more than others. And also the effects they have on my body. So, uh, that being said, so we know that the Holy Spirit is a balancing of uh, two logical extremes. Uh, the same for all people uh, in all dimensions, though, uh, such that the conscious world is the real-time world of the now moment, and the unconscious continues on the real-time now moment, but you see reflections of you're logically working out your best days at night you'll see reflections of that as nightmares of the timelines that you didn't want to have you'll see their endings the logical endings and you'll choose against that and because you're choosing against that at night you still have the image in your head uh, and so you might be waking up with an after image of a law of what i call to be a, what i call a logical ending and i i, I catch whispers of those sometimes when i'm smoke in my ball <laughs> um, or afterwards all right kids on the play all right we're gonna play. Okay. and I wish you guys uh, uh, a very simple journey to the next thing that you need to do to accomplish all of the goals that you're able to accomplish simultaneously in your life because that is going to be your greatest life story so remember to keep as many goals as you can that can simultaneously uh, exist. And the way that you do that is to always just kind of keep in check, like, hmm, the bigger goals should be not mutually exclusive. Like if you want a house, you probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't do anything too illegal inside the house because not only do, might you get arrested, but I mean, accidents do happen and houses do explode. So. Just make sure your goals are consistent and then generally life is there to support you and you'll get little weird pop-ups in your day that'll be like omens of misfortune. But if your day is mostly negative anyway, then the little pop-ups will unfortunately be only omens of fortune. You don't want the omens of fortune, okay? Because that means your whole life is screwed up. You want the omens of misfortune because that means generally it doesn't matter if you miss any because your whole life is fortunate. And that also answers the question of luck, which really doesn't exist. It's just everything is not random. I'm not sure how you missed that. Um, it's personal choice, though, and attention and willingness. Uh, yeah, and the common spirit. I remember that one, the common spirit, which we can call Asphalt Man. Asphalt Man. How's that for a new worldwide God concept that is arguably going to become the most accepted, common, undefined God concept? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, have a good one, guys.